Okay, and we're live in three, two, one. All right, welcome everybody to the fourth episode of the Waypoint Podcast. Uh, today, we are sitting down with Stephen Rossi of WorkSport. Uh, Steve, say hello. Hello, everybody. Thanks uh, for everyone that joined us uh, today and uh for, for those who are listening after the live event, uh, you know you know that uh, I'm always uh, reachable for any questions that might not have been covered in, uh, in today's Q&A. So, I mean, Steve, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so you have a pretty cool product. Um, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. For, for people new to the, you know, the, the work sport ecosystem, you know, I'll start super high level. First off, the business name is WorkSport. Our website is www.worksport.com, just as it sounds. Um, and uh, we trade uh, presently on the OTC exchange under ticker symbol WKSP. Um, and I guess, you know, starting from the top, uh, a quick background on, on me is, um, you know, I, I, I graduated high school like the rest of us, went to university, a couple years into university, I uh, wasn't happy with the direction, um, you know, that, that I was heading, which was medical, um, and decided to, to forge a path at uh, 19, let's say 18 and a half, 19 years old into into automotive. And, and I started uh, with very little uh, behind me. I started um, uh, auto parts store, uh, literally $500 in the pocket. Auto parts store grew into a chain of auto parts stores, grew into, uh, we had uh, acquired a, a series of auto wrecking yards as well. And you know, 23, 24 years old, and we have crushers and loaders. And, and it's all something that, that I built from the ground up. Um, and I made kind of a lot of mistakes. I'd bump my head a lot uh, against a lot of walls. And I, I really knew what it was like to, to manage payroll um, and, and, and grow a business. And, and, you know, I still to this day can pick up a, a, a phone and, and, and out cold call the best of us or the best of them. And, and I've knocked on doors, I've done sales, I've done everything. And, Growing into, uh, you know, in my mid-20s, we started selling truck bed covers um, and pickup trucks in North America or have been since probably the mid-90s. Uh, well, I'd say the, the late 80s and, and early 90s, like with the Chevy Like a Rock commercials and whatnot, they've just been picking up steam. They started in the 80s as, uh, well, they didn't start, but they in the 80s, uh, from as far back as I can, I can remember when I was born, it was, you know, a work truck, a farm truck, a uh, uh, you know, a, a, a grunt. Uh, in the 90s, they became more pointed. 2000s, the F-150 dominated with, you know, a really nice looking, you know, 04, 05 F-150. And ever since, I'd say the mid 2000s to early 2000s, pickup trucks have slowly been dominating the market. The sedan is now all but gone on a domestic level, uh, you know, left to the import brands. Uh, small SUVs are, are slowly, uh, you know, kind of not dying, but they're you know, people are moving more up to midsize and small pickup trucks. And, and now here we are, you know, pickup trucks outsell cars, uh, 60 million pickup trucks on the road. Um, and that, that number grows by millions every single year. It's the fastest growing uh, vehicle uh, segment. And, and we were selling, pick, we started selling lots of tunnel covers in our parts store, um, you know, in, in, in the, in, you know, before I founded WorkSport. And what had happened is, um, you know, I still remember to this day that, uh, a customer had come in and said, you know, I want a tunnel cover. And it's like, huh, a what? Um, so, you know, he looked at one and it was love on first sight, you know, love at first sight and, and opening up my first box. But after we became, you know, the, the, the Canadian, at least Ontario, Canada's number one uh, growing dealer and distributor, um, I started noticing that price was going up, quality was going down and, you know, the trucks were getting better and better every single generation and the covers were getting if not the same, they're, they're getting worse. Um, so that's on, you know, with that, uh, I took, I took a huge dive in 2010, let's say, yeah, 2010, I, I exited my position from, um, you know, my, my, what I had built at that point in, in my mid twenties, uh, was able to exit, you know, in, in an enviable position. And I invested all of my time and all of my effort into work sports. So it, officially opened in 2011 as a manufacturer, or at least at that point, a producer uh, of tunnel covers. And what tunnel covers are, you know, my long winded story leading up to now, tunnel covers are the items that cover the, the beds of pickup trucks. So it's, it's a little niche, I, I do agree. Um, but it's also the number one fastest, you know, well, let's say the number one growing, um, the, the number one accessory for the number one 
selling vehicle. So as much as it's a niche, it's not like, um, for example, like uh, shifter knobs or even light bulbs. It's, it's just, it's the number one thing for the number one vehicle. And the, and the barrier to entry that I learned immediately, I learned immediately is the barrier to entry is damning. Um, you know, the, the competition is so stiff and so litigious um, that it's, it's, it's brought upper middle market to, you know, yeah, the, the upper middle market fortune 500 companies to their knees, you know, through lawsuits and, 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 and issues. So we started in 2011 with, you know, design literally made by, you know, uh, speaker cable and, 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 and drywall screws. And I mean, we call it bubble gum and tape. Uh, we, 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 we looked at the, you know, we made a, a proof of concept. We shared the designs with, you know, at that point, uh, our starting factory in China. And, and I mean, the rest is kind of history moving forward. I mean, we, we've, we've, we, where we are now is much further in advance. Uh, 10 years later, uh, we have an intellectual property asset portfolio, which is extremely valuable for us as we grow uh, of, of over, uh, over 30 and working, you know, probably to exceed 40 assets between global, uh, global scale, uh, Asian market, can, uh, North American market, and Latin, Latin American market uh, trademarks and, and patents. Um, and, and to evolve the story a little further from there, we, we in 2013, um, we forecasted, and there's, if anyone goes on YouTube and types in, um, our, our business used to be called TruckSmart, T-R-U-X-M for Michael A-R-T, uh, and we changed to WorkSport because TruckSmart is a kind of a tongue twister. People didn't know how to spell it or pronounce it properly. So we, we WorkSport is much easier. So if you if you go on YouTube, any investor and types in YouTube, uh, TruckSmart, uh, Steve Rossi or TruckSmart uh, Helios, H-E-L-I-O-S, you'll see right there, you know, time stamped. And in 2014, we were we were doing, uh, you know, interviews and, and, and kind of uh, commercials relating to solar covers. And people thought we were crazy, but we, we knew... In 2013, when we were the crazy Canadians on the block, that it's only a matter of time before you know pickup trucks become electrified, uh, and it's also you know understandable that pickup truck owners are going to want power in the bed of their truck. Um, so, so you know we we really got an advance uh, on the market. Uh, so we were doing EV and charging way before it was cool and back when it was crazy. Um, and yeah, so so moving back, and I, I tend to jump over things. 2011 to 2013, we were growing conventional covers. Uh, soft folding, hard folding covers, uh, growing our distribution footprint, growing uh, our client footprint. And we were growing uh, with, with very little. We went public in 2014 as TruckSmart. Um, and uh, that's where you can find that video at, at me at the SEMA show in my younger years, uh, six years ago. And, um, and that's when we, we launched you know, the, 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 the project, the Helios, which is now to not confuse people. Now the business is called WorkSport, which is our, our, our global brand. Uh, and the product is no longer called Helios. We've updated the name to TerraVis. Uh, and, and to move to where we are now is that the TerraVis product is on one uh, platform, a solar tunnel cover for pickup trucks. The EV trucks forthcoming, like the Lord's Town Endurance, the, the Rivian, the Atlas, the Hercules, the Bollinger, the Ford F-150, the GM, GM Hummer, uh, all of these vehicles have pickup beds. And we have patents now that are you know, so grandfathered, so old, so well uh, vested um, that we have a very advanced technology uh, fusion between uh, uh, how it functions, like how it folds, how it operates, whether it has solar panels or not. So we have a very cool operating product. Uh, and then we've integrated solar solar technology into solar panels, into, um, you know, this, this, this folding cover to give you really cool bed access and, and, and coverage, keeping your tools and cargo clean and dry, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, you know, we, we can produce 400, 600, 800, or in certain optimal conditions, uh, a thousand watts of, of power. And this will trickle charge um, electric trucks. Now, um, that, that I want to really hone in on the TerraVis and the EV charging. So let me, let me make a couple of statements. First and foremost, um, and, and, and I want to be marked because if Elon says something, then everyone, it's like, it's the word of God. Um, you know, if, if, if certain, you know, influencers use their platform, it's like, this is, this is what we believe, but I, I want to go at least in record here, you know, on waypoint saying my position. Um, first off the Terra is equivalent today as the, as the pre-launch iPhone one. 
And if you look at, you know, Apple as it's grown from iPhone 1 to, you know, what I hold in my hand and many of you may hold in yours, the iPhone 12, it, it's, it's not even comparable. And I, I'm saying that the TerraVis technology is so new, we've been working on it, but solar has evolved, um, you know, b diodes have evolved, uh, battery management systems have evolved, uh, you know, with a monocrystalline, uh, polycrystalline, amorphous, you've got perovskite panels forthcoming, all this solar technology is what I'm saying is, Look at the TeraVis as, as, as that will be launched later this year as the iPhone 1. It is our Mark 1 entry product. And I will tell you where it'll start. As a Mark 1 entry product only for EV trucks, it will provide, let's say, 10 to 15 free miles a day in optimal conditions. And that's not a fine print. It's some days you have much less sun and PVs. There's no solar panels. There's no guesswork. It's just you have less sun and therefore it produces less energy. But 10 free miles when the average American commuter only commutes on average 33 miles, our iPhone 1 will off-grid, our equivalent of the iPhone 1, will off-grid charge 30% of the power that the average daily commuter needs to get to and from wherever they have to go. So if we start at 33 or 30%, or even let's say we're, I'm, I'm, we're rounding up too much, we're being too ambitious, let's say 25%, starting there, I think is already a victory far above and beyond our wildest dreams six years ago or five years ago when we initially uh, uh, came, came, walked down this road. And, and I'll explain why. I, and, and I call this, I've, I've, I've LinkedIn, I've, I've posted this on LinkedIn, and uh, you know we're only the small fry today, and, and we're going to be the big fry tomorrow of that, I assure myself and, and everyone listening and all of our colleagues, is what we're doing is what I call emissions deferral. Emissions deferral to me means, and I'll define it to, to, so that you know anyone listening understands what's, what, what, I, what I mean by this is, are we not deferring the emissions from a gasoline F-150 to that of a smokestack uh, of a, or, or a smog stack or an emission stack from a natural gas burning or coal burning plant um, you know, that, that needs to provide the power to the EV? Um, so I, I, I'm sure, John, that you're following along. And, and you know, to that, I, I wonder, does that make sense? Like what, what I'm explaining is if, if, we, if you pick up a Tesla and you plug that into the wall, have you done your part as Mother Nature really happier? No. Is, is what's on the other side of that plug? Is it green energy or is it, you know, an, a, a smog producing energy? Um, and, and chances are because of North America's weaning from natural gas because of actual climate change and, and, and you know, more efficient ways of producing uh, uh, um, heat, for example, the natural gas infrastructure is still totally underutilized. And what I mean by that is they've spent trillions of dollars to, you know, to build all the natural gas pipe work across North America, and they're not even close to having broken even. It was, there's articles about how you know, the, the, those who invested in natural gas infrastructure are still at a loss. They, they, have to, they have to sell natural gas for another 50 years before they even start breaking even. Um, so what are natural gas investors who invested trillion going to do? They're going to say, hey, U.S. government or hey, Canadian government, hey, Latin American governments, uh, you need power quick because all these EVs are drawing lots of power and we can provide quick uh, source of power by, you know, natural gas power plant or even coal or oil, which is still very, very prevalent, at least on the eastern side of the world and still within North America. So the problem I, the problem I have is EVs are not the answer to at least greenhouse glasses. Not at all. It's where the power comes from. And I believe that if TeraVis can take a bite to start of 25% of all, you know, the charge needs for the average commute, it's already a massive victory. As we evolve, our technology as we innovate what solar is. So not as we buy product from solar innovators, as we become the innovator that drives solar from 18% efficient from the from the, the, the late eighties and early nineties to 32, 33, 35, 40%, you know, that's in the foreseeable future, we will be 30%, 40%, 50%. And one day it is inevitable that we can be at least most, if not all of the power needed for vehicles average drive. It, it follows uh, so much logic and reason. And that, uh, it may not be in the foreseeable, graspable future, but technology is evolving. Solar's went from, you know, and like I said, 
18, 12, 15% efficiency to graspably 28, 32% with perovskite panels. And that's in, you know, a few, a few decades. Um, so, you know, I wanted a bucket, the TeraVis is an EV charger. Uh, so it is a fully functional cover that you need to cover the bed of your truck, protect your goods, uh, you know, help with aerodynamics, help with wind drag resistance, uh, you know, keep water, dust, dirt, debris out of the bed of your truck. It's your tool of choice for these trucks that everyone's buying. It's all the rage, but it's going to provide 25% of the power you need. Now let's shift over to those that still want a gasoline or diesel engine. Um, for, for those, it will provide power that'll charge a battery pack. That battery pack in the case of what just happened in Texas or what happens every year when there's fires and every year when there's hurricanes is that power is not reliant on a grid. It's not reliant on a cable uh, connecting, you know, from, from the utility to your home. It's power in the bed when you need it. And 1500 Watts uh, and up to six kilowatts of pack, if not, well, you, you, I'll explain the system and, and how our core system works, but that, that whole infrastructure uh, provides in-bed power. So if you swing a hammer, if you're a contractor, if you're an outdoorsman, if you're in law enforcement or border protection, or you're setting up, uh, you know, uh, for fairs or c photographer or drone, uh, any use where you need power and you don't want to run an extension cord or the power around you is far away or unstable or not connected or, you know, too, too many people like at contractor sites, there's too many people fighting over, you know, the generators and plugs that are already there. The TerraVis will be the answer to that solution. And the battery business, the energy storage solution or system business is, is just booming. And, and we've been working on this before it was cool. And that's why we've got, you know, a lot of anticipations, a lot of patents around that. So, so it's uh, to recap. Yeah, just sorry. to recap is, okay. yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry. No, I, I, I go ahead. So just... Just because it's small world. So uh, I have two patents myself, and both of them are related to providing power for general contractors that don't have an outlet when they're getting work done. We, I did a ton of research on that space. You're in a fantastic market to be in, especially, you know, nine times out of ten, these guys are showing up with their Ford F-150 or Ford F-250. So I think you're in a fantastic market for that, not just for the EV space, but also just for you know, general contractors and, and, you know, linesmen that need, you know, additional power. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I come from that background. I mean, I, I, I come from the background where I've disassembled cars, many of them and towed and crushed and built houses. And, and I'm not afraid of tools in my hand. Uh, you know, I, I'm most comfortable building something. And, you know, I, I just recently was renovating a basement with a friend of mine, uh, you know, asked for some help with someone who's not, you know, that's familiar with a hammer. And, you know, there were some lights and stuff that we needed to, to do some, some work. And it's like, you know, hey, and we, we literally, I brought in a TeraVis prototype, a core battery prototype, and he was blown away. Like, I was going to run an extension cord from the garage. And it's like, no, you, you don't need that. And he's like, I want to buy this right here. And it's like, you're not going to, but you will one day. And so will, the, you know, a lot of the 7 billion people on earth will want some form of shelfable power. Um, so the core system is the first of its kind. Not for, you know, a battery plus inverter, but the first of its kind in scalable battery. Um, so you can buy more packs. You can buy uh, bigger packs. Uh, you can buy one pack for, per contractor. You could buy uh, as much or as little power as you want from us so that when the competitor's power uh, pack is dead and you need to charge it for an hour or two or three, ours just, you, you discharge, the discharged battery cell is removed from the unit plugged into the solar cover that charges it at least once a day under sun conditions or plug it into the wall if there is no sun and use a fully charged, like a drill, a fully charged battery and boom, you have 1.5 kilowatt hours at 1500 watts. So one hour of 1500 watts available to you, you know, then in there and you can buy a bigger battery. So we'll have an X, uh, sorry, large, extra large and, and double XL battery pack that'll go one and a half. Uh, to two and a half kilowatt hours, which is a lot of power. The average house uses up to, I don't, I don't well, some houses are heavy at 19 or 20 kilowatts for a day, uh, but the average household is, you know, 10 to 12. And we can power, you know, the majority of that, you just buy the packs and you have the power. The output's not there. Sure, we're not putting out 200 amps, um, but, you know, we can power fridges and multimedia centers and internet and lots of lights and dock parties and, and anything that you can imagine. I, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and list all the, the applications for power. 
Um, so that's that's the TerraVis Plus Core. So yeah, we have our conventional truck bed covers that are not interesting, not exciting. But Johnson and Johnson, as much as producing COVID vaccines, is involved in producing baby powder. And I guess the baby powder has probably made many billionaires. Um, and and the and the, the shampoo that they make and the you know whatever it is that they make keeps the lights on. It's made wealth generationally over North America, and that's our conventional profitable business model. Conventional tunnel covers, we love it. We're going to keep going. It's great. Moving forward, Teravis plus EV truck fantastic win-win for everyone and for the grid um, and TeraVis plus core battery system for those who have, you know, diesel or gas or hybrid trucks like fuel over battery, uh, fantastic win-win. And then taking it a step forward into presume what, what we're calling TeraVis energy is microgrids. We already do scalable, foldable, so portable solar, and we're really good at that. And we also do portable modular batteries. So why not pair the two and make various rack applications so that you can mount them to trailers, RVs, campers, boats, uh, intermodal, uh, marine, uh, highway transport, uh, fairgrounds, the burning man that we've had conversations about, um, you know, uh, events of natural disaster is, you know, like a pop-up system. Uh, and also, why not small microgrid charge systems for little two-person vehicles or scooters or e-bikes? Uh, so imagine in the middle of an open area like, I don't know, where the Eiffel Tower is in France, for example, you set up a few Teravis, uh core systems that are, you know, for microgrid systems, and it's capturing the sun and providing small bits of power to charge your phone or, you know, top up your e-bike or golf carts or power drones or, or even like little photo booths or whatever you can imagine. And that's where TeraVis energy is, is shifting into, into manufacturing microgrids, selling and leasing the microgrids uh, as a product as a service or as a service as a service, um, as well as just a conventional for sale product. So, uh, you know, we, we will lease them, we will sell them, we will rent them. Uh, and that this can grow to a global scale. And I think the appetite for all of them are, are, are huge. Now, I, I think that I've captured a lot of where, how we started, what we make, and what we're doing now. And then we, we have much larger ambitions in terms of TerraVis energy, other forms of renewable, sustainable energy, and how we can manufacture and deploy them, uh, as well as we have other objectives in terms of becoming so now we, our DNA of a pickup truck is a tunnel cover. Uh, we are working very diligently to become much more of the DNA of the pickup or a pickup truck. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm careful with how I, how I phrase it, how I frame this. Um, but, you know, we, we have our small bucket, as I always call it, which is conventional truck sales and sorry, truck cover sales, tunnel cover sales, which is our core competency are one of our core competencies. We have TeraVis Energy in, in, as our medium bucket, which is solar plus truck or solar plus battery plus truck or just solar plus battery plus whatever application like microgrids. And we have a bigger bucket uh, where we're considering energy production um, and, and becoming much more of the DNA of, of, of you know, a truck. Uh, so, you know, examples would be, you know, the ABC truck WorkSport edition, or you know something to that extent. We're working towards it. You know it's in flux. It's changing, um, but we are. You know we do have our eye on a much larger addressable market beyond that of of even the massive market of you know microgrids and solar and, and developing. You know we have our eye set on perovskite as well and developing that technology. Um, so I, I think I've been very verbose. I've talked a lot, um, but you know I, I wanted to just kind of explain our 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 you know our system right now. And, and, you know, at that point, if there's any questions or if you need clarification on anything, I'd love, I'd love, love getting questions and the more challenging, the better. All right, great. So I think we're going to use that as a way to kind of pivot into some of these questions. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Before we do that though, um, I just, I want to touch base on what you said about, you know, a lot of these electric vehicles, not exactly being like eco-friendly because, you know, if you're charging, off of a grid that's intrinsically powered by, you know, coal or, you know, gas or just any non-renewable resource, th yeah, you know, you're maybe not practicing what you preach. And, you know, it's also important to remember 
especially for Tesla. It, and look, I love it. I hope to own one of these cars eventually. Um, they aren't exactly green when they're being built either. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're electric, but they're not really doing much for the environment. Um, well, the, 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 I, I love talking to this point as much as I look up to Elon uh, and any pioneer in, you know, in, in a market that's the, he's, he and Tesla ha have shown, you know, the world, you know, how possible the impossible is and how expeditious innovation and ingenuity can be. Um, but frankly, you don't become a billionaire not selling things. So we have to think, what is Tesla and what has Elon sold? And right now, it's very, very clear, Elon is selling power. He's selling access to the microgrid or the, 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 the super grid or whatever it's called. Um, and the point is, you know, he went on Joe Rogan and said, yeah, solar is not going to be viable. Of course it's not when you're a power salesperson. Um, so to that extent, I believe that the production of, you know, NMC or lithium uh, battery, the production of an EV and the power uh, through which the EV is charged, they're all probably equally, if not more polluted than, you know, just a, 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 an iron engine producing, you know, they're, they're much more efficient now. We have NOMS 5, NOMS 6 standards now. I think I'm not an expert in, in North America. The, the emissions that the vehicles produce are incredibly uh, mitigated versus what they were even five years ago. Um, so the point is that, yeah, like Tesla sells power and vehicles. And in fact, interestingly enough, today was the first, I, the first Tesla I ever drove with today. I got to drive a Model X and check it out, and I think it's great um, with the all wing doors and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, you just have to wonder, where's the power coming from? Uh, and there's arguments two and two, two and four. And also, um, you know, what about wall? Like, you're going to need a um, uh, John, a, a tier two charger, a level two charger at your house. The, the the guy I drove, the guy that owns a Tesla that I got to drive today, he says, yeah, you could plug it in at home. I took it home, um, and uh, and he says you could plug it in at home. You could plug it in all night, and it might give you like seven to ten percent. It's like, what what's that going to do? <laughs> it's not going to do anything. So I need like. A, you know, a tier or level one charge. I think that that's appropriate. The level one is the faster charge, um, and and that's that's a lot of power. And where's that power going to come from? Do the, can the grids even facilitate it? I think on the west coast they're already struggling with brownouts and power outage. I know they are as well in, in most of the UK. So can the grids? The grids are, are obviously the, the utilities are going to upgrade them. Um, but you know, once they upgrade them, where's the where's the power going to come from? I I certainly don't think that hydro um, or, or nuclear power is super feasible uh, or very easy to set up, and it's not without its own, uh, well, much less um, hydro. But, you know, nuclear, I'm sure, has a, a vast carbon footprint just from the footprint of the, of the plant itself. So anyway, the point is that everyone's going green, and it's super, super appealing, and we need to do it. Uh, and with, you know, Canada and U.S. Trying to, trying to get rid of internal combustion vehicles or engine vehicles by 2035 or or 2045. I've, I've seen various dates and different targets. Um, just you just have to wonder where, where's the power going to come from, and, and is it is it clean power? Or are we just are we just replacing one exhaust one you know uh, 60 million small exhaust pipes with you know uh, six million much larger ones? So I guess that's the end of my rant on that. And and you know I, I'd love to you know talk more about that. I'd love to talk more about my position and our vision. And you know also. Uh, to any any members of the of the of the waypoint uh, and the Discord, um, you know, one thing that's that's very critical is that a lot of new companies or a lot of OTC issuers in our space are venture companies, and there's a new management and you know business model changes, and you know who you're listening to right now, uh, myself, Stephen Rossi, I've been the CEO, I founded Worksport as I mentioned, but I've also been the CEO and you know in control of Worksport since 2014. Um, so I, I have a history, six years CEO management behind us, and we have a lot of shareholders that are with us from day one, still with us today. Uh, and most of our shareholders are super long term, two, three, four, five years. And I, I have that history. So with OTC and very volatile markets, John, I think you know this, people are very skeptical. Like, is this uh, uh, you know, going to be defunct tomorrow? Is it going to go up and then down? All these terrible things. You know, and, and, you know, I always love being judged by my history. And it, it, there's ebb and flow. There's peaks and valleys. There's goods and bad. Uh, but I, 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 you know, speaking overwhelmingly, uh, you know, for, for on behalf of the long-term shareholders, 
you know, I have a, I have a tapestry, a history behind me uh, that I'm proud of and I want to be judged on it. And that's one of transparency, always answering emails, always being kind, courteous and protecting cash and equity treasury with the utmost vigor. Um, so we're not giving away, uh, you know, positions or stock in our company. We're not spending money into oblivion. And we've, we've proven what we can do with very little capital uh, up until just this year. And now we've raised, you know, much more than we've ever uh, even intended to raise. And, you know, we just, we anyone that's with us now, you know, consider this, you know, day one almost of, you know, the, the, uh, an incredibly bright future ahead because we're, we're on, we're running on all, all cylinders, no pun intended towards, you know, the emissions talk. Well, you know, I think that's the, uh, yeah, I, I kind of hit on this on every episode. That's kind of what we're trying to do with Waypoint is, you know, show people that there's a different way to do things, that the OTC doesn't have to be this kind of, I hate to say it, like scummy underbelly of, uh, of, of you know, the stock market. Um, mm -hmm. And it, look, at CEOs like you that, that I think prove that, you know, we can do better and we are doing better. Um, so I, I guess, but before we start taking questions, the only question that I have for you is, you know, I, I get where the covers came from. What, what was the reason to, that pushed you kind of into saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to make this solar powered. I'm going to, you know, strap a battery on there and, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Cause this, everybody's got their story, their, their, their Eureka moment. So, you know, I, I love taking credit when, when it's due to me, but this one's not. Um, uh, one of our directors um, is Lorenzo Rossi, who also happens to be my father. And, um, and you know, he, through the years of working work sport, uh, you know, and, and, and being not a, uh, you know, it's not dad's company, but, you know, he, he, I always involve him in my endeavors. Uh, and, and as, of course, my father and as a politician, as a businessman, as a teacher, as so many, you know, things he's done in life, uh, you know, someone that has just, you know, a lot of wisdom. And I remember, boy, maybe 2013, he had called me with saying, you know, literally like four sentences. Hey, what are you doing? And I remember I was in an R&D meeting uh, in downtown Toronto at the time. Uh, and I said, I'm in an R&D meeting with, with my team. And uh, he says, just quick idea. Uh, love the name Helios. You should make a solar panel tunnel cover. And it's like, you know, after that, it was like, we just ran with that idea. And, and to him, I give all the credit uh, of the concept of the Helios and, and, you know, the team behind me has brought it to the Terravis and core system, which is much more evolved. But the initial aha moment was, was not mine. Uh, and as much as it's easy to say, yeah, it's, it's all me, it's, it's not. And, and I, I pride myself on surrounding, you know, I don't want this to be the Stephen Rossi show, and it never will be. It's a team of individuals that all work, you know, 80 hours a week on, on this company. And, and we have uh, s four contract engineers, uh, two industrial engineers, one design engineer working for us directly, uh, one accounting, one business development. We have a sales pro starting, uh, you know, in March. So we, we have a team and an advisorship team, a director team. Uh, based on the PR that we, 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 we put out on Tuesday, we have tier one and tier two uh, strategic partnerships forming with like, you know, diamond standard companies now. Uh, so it, it's not the Steven show. It's, it's the work sports show. And I'm but one of, of the, the cogs in a bigger wheel. Uh, and I'm proud of participating and bringing work sport to where it is, but it's, it's not all me. Uh, so yeah, Lorenzo, um, you know, thought of a solar tunnel cover and we, we took it, we incubated it and we ran with it. And we've come up with something that that I think is is, is going to make history. It already has. Awesome. I think that's the perfect time to kind of kick it over to the investors. I see a couple of questions, and I don't want anybody to feel ignored. Um, so let's let's start. Okay, let's see. John Voy N J says, "Love to hear more about the battery operating system and plans for future use with this." Okay. Um, so the, the battery system, okay, so the core system is going to be, we, we love uh, LFP or lithium iron phosphate. We think it's a much more stable uh, technology for cold and warm, uh, um, you know, discharge as well as charge. Um, but it's just not dense enough. So we're going to go with what everyone else uses, which is a, uh, a, lithium, ion, a lithium ion NMC battery. 
Um, so the, 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 the chemistry, the, the, the architecture is a standard NMC uh, lithium ion battery uh, pack. Um, we're, we're looking at either pouch or, or cylindrical uh, tubes, and I think we're looking at the larger ones. And I can't remember the designation. I'm sorry, I see so many numbers of which if it's like the 18650 or I think it's a, it's, a, it's another type of of of, uh, of um, cell. Um, and you sine wave inverter uh, paired with Bluetooth uh, connectivity to an app. The app you control, you know, monitor. Um, so it's a fairly intuitive system. Um, you know, to, to answer any particular questions, I can, but. Uh, you know, the, the real hard stats right now, where it's a 1500 watt sine wave inverter uh, that will power four plugs uh, with a max of 1500 watts for one plug or 1500 watts divided amongst four plugs. So it's not like, um, you know, uh, 400 watts uh, or, or 375 watts per plug. It's, it's, it's either all in one or, you know, it has to be distributed evenly amongst two or three or four. Uh, and 1,500 watts, we, we, we initially, in our, our website, it still says 2,000. I think we're honing in on 15. A 2,000-watt inverter is big. It's, it's just it's, it's 500 watts more. So it's, uh, what is that, 25% more power, but it's like 30% bigger. So we don't want to give up the space. We don't want a clunkier battery pack. Um, so we're, we're 1,500 watt on our inverter. Um, you know, uh, AC-DC output, AC-DC input. And, uh, and solar input as well. So that's the M, uh, I can't remember the, the MC4 connector, um, but it'll be a proprietary connector that, that adapts an MC4. So you, you have to buy our adapter if you want to use somebody else's cell. Um, and then the, the packs in between are, yeah, uh, 1.5 kilowatt hour uh, lithium, ion, lithium ion um, battery packs. Um, and, you know, we have some pretty hard stats on discharge rates, charge rates, uh, we have a, a pretty cool uh, inverted airflow system that, you know, sucks warm air up while it's charging um, so that, you know, it keeps the batteries warm in, in a colder environment as well as pushes hot air out while deploying or discharging. So we have kind of a nice inverted, uh, you know, airflow system, waterproof, um, and, you know, the, 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 tech, the batteries will come from China. The inverter and the charge controllers will come from China. Um, that's sad, not sadly, but that's, you know, just where the market is right now. Uh, and it'll be assembled in and packaged here in Canada. Um, so that's, that's, you know, a lot of the questions there will be an app, a screen interface, push button. Uh, so it's not like a touch screen where it can damage it's push button with a nice, you know, LCD screen, uh, app system that you can monitor, register, charge, you know, uh, check charge and all that kind of stuff on, on Android and iOS. And I think that I've covered a lot of the basics there if there's any particular questions happy to answer them all right we'll keep going down the list i do want to ask real quick did you guys go with ul or etl for your uh certification uh so it's going to be utl at this time but um you know it, it's uh it's something that i'm it's not my particular um you know wheelhouse so i i mean like there's there's two electrical engineers that we contract um you know that that are really looking at everything on a you know more global scale um, but, uh, I, I, I believe it's UTL. I'll have to double check. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but again, it's, it's not my specific wheelhouse. Yeah, no, no worries. Just, just curious. Uh, yeah. let's see. All right. This guy's got a good username too. Linkonomics, uh, asks how easy do you think it is for other battery, con uh, sorry, for other battery companies to develop a competitor to your Terra V's product? What are the particular challenges of developing these solar panel and battery solutions for vehicles such as trucks, vans, and long haulers? Um, you know, pretty good question. Um, you know, with, with design, um, sorry, you're still, okay, good. Um, with design patents and utility patents on a global scale and, and you know, a very strong strategy on divisional patents for, you know, going, uh, you know, more, more granular into the technology, this is all jargon. Uh, you know, you can research what divisional patents are and global scale PCT patents. But you know, we we we've we've had a lot of time to patent our technology uh, and design patents. You know, patent the design and the functionality and the appearance. So you know, we protect ourselves with on the intellectual property side. Um, but we also, you know, like look, someone invented you know a tire, and now every car uses tire, and someone invented spark plugs, and now every car uses spark plugs. So I think that we're 
there's a will, there's a way, and we're not into, you know, mud fights and dog fights. Uh, we'll protect with vigor our, our intellectual property, but at a certain point, um, you know, the, every, every fight has, you know, its ups and downs. So, you know, we're of the, of the, of, you know, the belief that on top of being, you know, doing something well, you should be first. Um, so we, we, we intend to, to be first to market with such a design uh, and, and, and we'll continue to innovate. Um, so as much as I, I think that the mysteriousness of the company that I like to present is we thought of this six years ago. So everyone's like, oh, wow, this is great. It's 2021. Look at this innovation. You know, I, I, I was 25 years old or sorry, like, uh, sorry, 28 years old when I thought of this. I, I've had a lot more thoughts in the past six years um, that, you know, we this is this is kind of our baby shoes there's a lot more down the pipeline and, and uh, you know, at a certain point protecting something when we have something, you know, way better planned and way better behind that plan and way better behind that plan, um, you know, is, is, uh, is, it's all strategy. So, um, you know, any competitor that's, you know, imitations of a very good form of flattery will still be better than them. Um, and that's a cocky approach that we've, we've well learned. Um, so yeah, if somebody from China or, or North America domestically, you know, copies it, we'll protect it. Uh, so it'll be painful for them. Um, but you know, it's also something that, you know, we'll, we'll just keep on bettering and, and, you know, at a certain point innovation wins. Oh, uh, and the question to, yeah. So yeah, the, 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 the course, the battery, sorry, the TerraVis plus core system, like the, the, the systems will be universally available for any, any mounting system. So you know, we'll have a few different sizes. And if you want, you know, like the, the two by four uh, foot, you know, that's that's an obscure, like a, we won't go by foot measurement, but we'll have various models uh, with universal mounting rails that you can mount to your cabin or trailer or boat or, or whatever you want. So there'll, there'll be universal applications for, for yeah, off grid or micro grid systems, not just, not just pickup trucks. And I, I did talk to, to that point earlier. Real quick before we uh, ask the next question, how long that, because I know mine is good for the, they got issued this year. So I, I've got probably like 19 and a half years left on mine. Uh, did, did you guys go through Canadian court first, US court? Uh, how long do you guys get on your patents? So you're, you're 25 years and then, and then you, you know, you have to show reasonable improvement, um, you know, to, to, to carry or re, reissue a patent. Um, so that, that's a strategy moving forward, but it's 25 years. Uh, trademark, I believe, is 10. I'm not sure, even though I have, you know, desk full of them. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're 25 years on the PCT level, uh, on the global scale, pulling down into various markets. They vary, but usually it's 25 years. Our oldest patent was issued in 2000 and boy. I don't remember 2012. So it's it's, it's running. It's it's run its some of its course, but we've already improved it five times over. So as long as you can show improvement, uh, you know, inventiveness on top of inventiveness, uh, you know, you could reissue a, a more broad or less broad uh, series of claims on your patent, at least if it's an improvement on. So uh, there's lots of strategies, you know, th there's only so long you could protect the design of a Q-tip or a roll of toilet paper, for example, because it's very broad. Um, but um, but with, with our systems, yeah, it's, it's the 25 year US Canadian market uh, on the core system, it's, it's a much more, you know, global scale. Uh, we just had to re kind of jig everything with Brexit uh, because now it's no longer a European Union patent. You know, the UK has its own series of patents, which we got free, you know, kind of divisionally free. Uh, but now it's it's more kind of uh, nurturing would have to do with more patent markets for us. Okay. Uh, good to know. Uh, good to know for multiple reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess to, to, to build off that, Lincolnomics also asks, uh, to clarify, is your R&D focus on the photovoltaic technology, the battery tech, or the way that you guys implement current, uh, current existing technology? I don't think there's a right answer here. Um, can you hear me, John? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Okay. Um, so th there's no, there's, it's a challenging question, and not because I don't have an answer, but because I guess it's, for all three so what we're doing now is we're trying to you not trying we're fusing it all so we're taking technology that's available to us and you know fusing it all into our application and we're you know we've been working on it for a long time it's a big project 
um, you know, even just tooling and fitting and latching and locking and measurements and OEM CAD data and, you know, the, the, the GM trucks keep changing every two or three years. So all that's a big moving part. So right now we're just trying to get it out with relying on partnerships, supply partnerships for conventional, best in class conventional products. So the best monocrystalline photovoltaics while we're looking at pop perovskite, you know, in the next 24 months is taking over. So it'll be the, passing the baton. Um, on the battery side, you know, we, we've done some, some cool things in how to, how to make our modular system, but that's, you know, very basic. It's not really in like on a granular level on the, on the science, on the chemistry per se. So phase one uh, is this year is to get the product out using conventional um, products like, 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 you know, partnering with a solar provider, partnering with a battery provider. And then, you know, we package it, house it in our, you know, intellectual property, our unique design, and we sell it. Then once that's to market, our job, like I had said, is, you know, this is something we thought about six years ago. So then it's bettering it with, you know, the, the, you know, the things we've kind of kept behind, uh, you know, and brewed uh, over the past few years. So it's improving, you know, how it looks, how it functions, and then really honing in with electrical engineers and our own, our own inventiveness on how do we make solar better? How do we make solar more stable so that, you know, you don't have to rely on bypass um, diodes when you have a, you know, series of broken cells or, how do we make it more efficient? How do we make it uh, lighter? How do we make it dissipate heat easier on the photovoltaics? On the battery side, it's how do we make it uh, charge colder? How do we make it charge warmer? How do we make it uh, last more than 1,000 charge cycles? Um, so the answer, I guess, is very simple: is we are trying to we are going to fuse available products or available technology today, and then once we have that in market. Uh, we will work exclusively on bettering that and not bettering the packaging of the TeraVis, but bettering the technology of the TeraVis. So we aim to be the reason why solar is now 25% efficient. Uh, so we aim to be, you know, the disruptors and innovators in photovoltaics and uh, battery technology. And if, and if, if we can't, then, you know, we're going to partner with the best. So monocrystalline, um, you know, loves to be, um, it loves to, you know, the, the sun has to be normal uh, to the panel on actually, well, on, on varying angles, like a 30 degree or, or whatever. And the sun tends to move obviously throughout the day. The truck also tends to move throughout the day. Um, so it's, it's challenging, but, you know, under best uh, or optimal conditions, we can capture almost 21%. Uh, efficiency, which is, I think, market best in a, in a commercially feasible product without, you know, we don't want to charge 400% more for half a percent more efficiency. Uh, so we're going to be using monocrystalline with an aluminum heat dissipation substrate, uh, you know, plenty of bypass diodes so that, you know, if we have a, a dead cell, it doesn't affect or become toxic uh, to the system. Um, and and we'll improve on that. Uh, on the NMC or lithium ion side of things, uh, standard. Uh, you know, chemistry there, not, nothing, nothing inventive yet, because, um, you know, it, it's, it's just evolving so fast that we haven't been able to, to, to even, we haven't even had time to, to look at that. So, um, yeah, I think that, that should be a question. Um, what do you mean? Like what we're going to sell it for, how much of it we're going to sell? Um, you know what? Uh, John Boyd, uh, NJ, did you have a follow up for that? Um, I'll wait for him to reply, and I guess we'll do Thought Squad Leader until he does. So uh, we'll skip that question for right now. Uh, do you see a market for your product within the government, in particular US and Canada? Uh, thinking on what you said about natural disasters, it sounds like there's an application for disaster relief. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, 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 the very, very clear answer is like, is audibly yes as possible. Like for sure, uh, you know, Coast Guard and, and military and, you know, aid 
uh, foundations will, will be knocking on the door aggressively, and we don't just know for answers. So, um, you know, it's not a product that I think that uh, we'll have to take no for. Um, we think that it's it's you know it's got a huge huge uh, value proposition. Uh, but yeah, there, there, there's you know both both governmental and private you know market uh, private business uh, applications for it. And, and when when it's to market on a global scale, we're we're gonna we're gonna hit the ground running. So that's why you know the sales team is is already brewing uh, with our first edition uh, sometime coming um, should be first of April is when we really start putting you know proverbial uh, shovel to soil on that and and, and forging those paths. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, it's, it's a no-brainer for us to look at, you know, governmental, whether, you know, we, we don't really have a particular um, need to go, like, military, like, I don't think this is a war system, but, um, you know, definitely, like, defense, protect, uh, you know, border, the, these kinds of applications, for sure, for sure. Okay, follow-up question is um, also from Bot Squad Leader. Uh, would you be able to modify the product to fit in a work van? Or I guess on top sure. of a work van. Are there any yeah, yeah, plans for that? Yeah, yeah. There's, that's what I, I've, I've said. I've answered that. I'm not saying this, you know, tongue in cheek or as a dart or anything like that. I've, I've said that, you know, twice now. But yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have van, um, you know, marine, marine uh, tractor trailer applications, freight, intermodal. Uh, so we'll have, you know, universal systems like where you, you know you measure the roof on your van, you, you buy the rack. You might have to, you know, do a little bit of installation in terms of. I, I don't think it'll be like a uh, custom like clamp fit you may have to unfortunately like drill or uh or, or nut and bolt you know our, our rack system for the van even though vans usually have like what's called a roof flange that we can we can universally mount to but yeah we, we will have a universal system that uh will be will be deployable mountable and usable in vans cube truck tractor trailer like the wheeler big world marine uh, uh applications any application uh, whether it has wheels or moves or not, uh, we'll have we'll have fitment for it, and we'll build that out. Uh, maybe we won't get to all of that this year. Of course, it's a big undertaking, but uh, some universal systems definitely coming out. Um, you know, sooner than later. So for the universal system, and this is just me asking. You know, if l let's say it was installed on an eighteen wheeler, do you do you plan on having like, I guess a almost like a, I'm trying to think of the best word to explain it almost like a certified installer for stuff like that because I could imagine you know that not being installed properly and causing a lot of issues well, yeah so you'd have to go through like certification so we'd have our own like kind of like our uh, I think it's like a we've, we've, we've been able to capture some of the early talks of like a three-day uh, online or kind of like a, you know it'll be a booklet and a test that you should take about three days to kind of really stew over over a few you know just understanding dc ac inversion uh weather conditions charging you know routing the, the proper grommets to use and so there'll be like a quick little you know free test that a dealer or distributor will need to take uh then they're authorized and if they you know if there's a master installer that has apprentices working under them it's just the master that needs the certification from us uh, and they can install it anything short of that is void of warranty um, and, and, you know, we, we obviously will release the liability to these folks. Yeah, if you go and try to pull this together and something, you know, there's harm caused or, or damage caused, you know, it, it's not a, a, you know, stroller, for example. It's, it's a high-tech piece of equipment that, that will require, you know, knowledge to, to install. Not technical. Like, it's not like, you know, framing a house, for example. Um, but it, it, it's, you know, you will have to, it'll have to be installed by, by those who understand you know, various, various concepts, very basic concepts of, of electrical, you know, whether it's AC and DC. So, and I know this is kind of hammering on what's already been discussed, but, you know, the tiny home movement is gaining, a, you know, gaining unprecedented speed at this point. And I think it's partially because of COVID. I mean, do you guys have plans to have a separate unit for something like that? Or maybe just, it's the same unit as what you'd put on an 18 wheeler? Oh yeah, no, it'll it'll be the exact same thing. It'll it'll be the same modular unit that you would put on a like a key van. So it'd be like our six kilowatt unit, uh, with like probably a 600, 600 watt panel system and a, and a rack that you anchor to the ground, whether you know stakes in, in, in earth or you know anchored to concrete um, or or you know anchored to the roof directly. Like there'll be a rack, so you could be separate from the roof. 
um, or um, or it'll bolt directly to the roof and it could be removable. So tiny home, you got to move it. Uh, you're going away. You don't want someone to try to steal or damage the solar panels. You literally can unclip our, our, our PVs or our solar panels from the, the, the rail system like, a ton, like our tunnel cover and remove it and bring it inside. It's relatively lightweight. Um, so yeah, the, it'll be tiny home, mobile homes, uh, trailers, campers, RVs, everything, a a any, any surface, uh, that you want to use our system in it'll, they'll, they'll, we're calling them, they're calling them the Terabeast microgrids and they'll be, you know, available for any application, whether it's a home or, on, you know, a park or, uh, anything. All right. So to, to keep the conversation rolling on that, cause I kind of like where we're at, um, you know, I have a I have a buddy that converted a school bus into a tiny home, and mm -hmm. the battery situation is absolutely fucking terrifying. I mean, mm -hmm. I almost don't want to step foot in that thing because I see the way that he's wired everything up, and it's like kind of stuck away in a corner, and very shoddily done. Um, you know, if he were to buy, you know, the the uh, Teravis uh, system for his bus. Do you, you know, what does that look like in terms of the, the, the battery storage? So it's scalable. So it's as many batteries. I, I, right now, our, our current truck models is, is going to be capable of handling four. Um, but we can, we can have multiple systems running in conjunction. So uh, any multiple of four is the answer so far. But we might up it to like any multiple um, of, of, of like six. And what I mean is one... Uh, inverter char one charge controller can charge up to four batteries simultaneously. Um, so if he, you know, and each battery is one and a half kilowatts. So if he wants, he or she, if the desired person only needs six kilowatts, you know, for some LED, you know, laptop, Netflix, you know, just really like living like salt of the earth off, off, you know, off the, off the earth kind of thing. Uh, six kilowatts is, is one system. If you need, uh, more you buy two systems and they and they they connect and if you need uh, uh, you know 18 kilowatts which is like a whole house uh, like a full-size house for the day um, you know that's that's uh, three systems so that's it's a big price tag it's not going to be like a million dollars it's like each system is not going to be you know nine hundred ninety nine dollars for example but um, it's uh, it, it's it's going to produce quite a bit of power and, and each system can be installed in different locations too so it's kind of cool uh, in, in the concept where the batteries could all be in one spot, but the solars can all be in different. Uh, so you don't have to keep moving things or, or you know, have, have panels uh, all facing one direction and, and uh, they capture sun for a bit, but not the rest. So you can have kind of best of all worlds. So, uh, yeah, it, there'll, there'll be a fully scale. That's, that's our, our model is scalable and modular. So it's, it's how much you want. Uh, you just, just, just buy it and, and connect it. Interesting. And then last one on that, and then we'll take a couple more. Just sorry. It's just, I, I really like the, the, the concept of it. Um, you know, if you were, again, if, 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 let's say it was an 18 wheeler, you know, do you still have the ability to, you know, detach the battery on that one? Sure. Yeah. 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 It's all connectable and it, yeah, they pop in and out. So yeah, it's all like the, the solar, the, the photovoltaics, you know, run, have, have run wires. The wires go to a charge controller and the charge controller uh, can charge or not charge. So it's the batteries connect essentially to that, um, which is all built into our system um, through the, the and there's more uh, images and, 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 uh, and, and like, you know, more photos and videos we're going to be releasing of the product, you know, coming up pretty soon and moving forward. Um, you know, now that we've locked in a lot of key critical design elements, um, but uh, yeah, so you know, you're, you're, they don't have to be connected. You can pop the batteries out, carry the inverter system with a battery in it. You know, while you're fishing on the boat, it's powering your trolling motor, or it's powering a radio, or it's you know whatever you need, and then you know back on the grid. So you could split it. Uh, you know, if you're, uh, let's say, you're living in the day in, in your friend's you know life that's you know off grid and and uh, and living in in the in the smaller home. Uh, and he's, he wants to go fishing. It's like you can disconnect a portion of your system from home without impeding its operation by taking a battery and and the, the, the what we call the inverter box, which is the whole assembly. Um, you know, if you have more than one, um, you take you know one battery that's charged and the inverter box with you, and you use that as your mobile power. You come back, and then you you, you connect everything back to its kind of its home base. 
uh, and it's just charging and you know deploying power at the same time. I love it. I, that's 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 huge. Um, I, I let me know when the video is ready because I'd love to share that out because that is I could see that changing a lot for a lot of people. And uh, Ness Roms twenty twenty points out, you know, that's good for emergency use as well. Um, yep. You know, things like like this would have been huge for Texas with that power outage. Yeah, and they were they were the article I posted on Twitter as well is like yeah they were using the hybrid F one fifties for power, and it's like you know they're, they're, they yeah they have six kilowatts or seven kilowatts back there with a lot of power sure, um, but you know it's it's the, and then again you're you're firing that thing up to charge them again, um, so it's like kind of there when you need it, um, that which is checking one of the boxes but the other box is like how long did you have to leave that that thing charged for, um, you know to you know to to, to get those those powered up again and now of course yeah, I, dro I drove to work a few times and those batteries were were charged up again but it just it doesn't make sense a uh, long term like you know running an engine and, and i can't remember which hurricane it was it was one of the more recent ones um that you know more deaths were caused from uh, co2 inhalation and poisoning than the hurricane itself from you know pull cord generators so it's like we're just trying to you know we're not doing anything that's brilliant i think it just makes so much sense uh, we're just trying to package it and make it really easy. So we're we're making our product like like an, or we really look up to Apple, for example, of making things like a beautiful, beautifully simple ecosystem. Um, so it's like yeah, like they all have like an Apple product next to you know the coolest Android product. Maybe doesn't have like that trillion core processor that no one really needs, but it just makes um, you know like a simple beautiful functional product that's simple and easy to use i'm not saying i'm an apple or android fan but what i'm saying is we're we're, we're prying on that kind of positioning where it's like we're, we're maybe you know we're not going to you know do perovskite tomorrow because that's not feasible yet so it's not like this earth shattering technology but we're making it just simply beautiful that's all no i i totally agree and actually speaking of uh iphone linkonomics has another question saying uh, let's see. What do you think of the expected lifetime of the product? Do you expect the customer to upgrade every two, three years, like the iPhone comparison you made? Well, we're a so on the batteries, we're going to have a refer program. So you could, you know, eventually they will stale like a phone, like after the first year of any phone, if you're a heavy phone user, it just never seems to last that full day. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm always on my phone and I'm, I, I, I'm crying the blues all the time. So, we're not we're not going to be able to get away from that that's just the fact of life so um the point is that the the batteries are minimum cycled a thousand times so if you plug them in a thousand times they will they before they reduce um you know in efficiency or life uh, expectancy they will they will last a thousand charge cycles so um that's you know you know top to bottom charge um so that that should get about three years before they need to be refurbished um, I think it's fine, and then the technology in terms of the solar and the inverter box, um, that, that should remain the same. We may make them smaller, stronger, more powerful. That's an upgrade if you want, uh, if it makes sense to the consumer. But the, the solar panels and the inverter box will always be relevant and shouldn't ever fail unless mistreated or just from like really old age. Uh, it's the battery technology that'll, that, that has a shelf life, right? Um, and, uh, and and so we're, we'll and then people should be able to mail them in and they're heavy but they're small you know mail them back and we should be able to refurbish them and, and send them back out again with new new cells within um, you know for a fraction of the cost but you know we're trying not to make people buy something new after three years but there there will be a you know a, a, an investment in the product over 20 years that just just natural comes with comes with the, the technology. All right. Uh, another question from Lincolnomics. Great question so far, by the way. Thank you. Uh, it says, how many employees uh, does WorkSport have? Um, so, yeah, we, we'll start with that. Yeah, so I, I touched on that earlier. So we have four contract engineers um, that, that are, you know, full-time for WorkSport, but contract, as in, like, they, we, we pay them as a, you know, not as an employee, but as a business, per se. Um, so that's like our, we've had these same engineers for years. Uh, we have on staff at this time right now, we have, uh, two in two, um, you know, I guess you can call them interns. 
uh, three engineers. Two of them are uh, design. Sorry, one is a design engineer. Two are industrial engineers. One with a electrical background as well. Um, we have uh, an administrative. Uh, so I, you know, we're at about eleven. If I were to count it all, uh, we're going to probably be closer to, um, uh, to like you know the, the twenty mark. But I, I, I approach this very delicately because for some strange reason and the, the silliest of reasons, um, investors tend to think that a viable business is the one that has lots of employees. Um, you know, and I, I think, John, like you're, you're all autonomous, like obviously, you know, this, this very platform isn't free and your phone bill is not free. So there has to be some money made. And I think that anyone, you know, that's in an entrepreneurial side has to understand that, um, you know, the, the largest expense to a company is payroll. So I think that the thought process of the older or an older thought process of the big company with lots of employees is, you know, the, the, the good one. But like we learned with many newspaper or publications or things that were just kind of like maybe not staying with the times that the larger the business and the more the staff, um, you know, usually uh, the, the more bloated, the more hard to move, the more uh, likely it is that it'll fail. So my answer to how many employees uh, we have is, is, you know, it sounds brutal, and I might not get the mark that I want for this statement, but if we could do it with one, we would. Um, you know, it, it, it's the point is, is that we love hiring, we love, you know, it, it participating in the economy, but it's, you know, it, us, it's finding a candidate that's as strong as 10 people. Uh, and that's who we have. We have within our, our, ban our, our wheelhouse, you know, it, you know, employees that are, are just, you know, they, they, they do what, and I've, I've been an employer since I was 18 and a half years old. I've never taken a paycheck from any other person, but making my own my entire adult life. So I think that I, more than lots of people, am qualified to say this, that having lots of employees uh, is not always a good thing. Um, so yeah, we're, we're at about 11 now, uh, and, and we could probably scale this, this business up to, you know, to really high revenue levels without having to go much higher. Like we, we think we'll might cap out at about 20 with the factory, you know, and local manufacturing might be closer to 30. But if we can keep it there um, or, or even reduce that, that'd be great. And, and you know, again, we, 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 I will only hire the best in class and, and the people that, you know, do the job of, of five or ten employees. And I'm not saying we're a slave driver, but we look for brilliant minds. And, and my, my first statement in, in interviewing people, and I made the statement today in, in two interviews, is there are two types of people, John, on this earth. Uh, those that you have to read an entire textbook to for them to understand but one sentence and those that you just have to tell them one sentence and with that they will beautifully magically and intellectually extrapolate a whole textbook and we hire the latter of the two those that we, we give them an inch and they give us a mile um, and 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 that's that's where legacy and and growth is is har harbored so yeah the answer long answer to that question is we have we have a handful of people. We're I think we're at about eleven now, um, and and we're growing, but you know we're, we're very very cautious of of you know being a bloated company. No, look, I think that's the way you need to be. I mean, look at I mean Uber is a fantastic example of a company that honestly could probably be run on about forty employees, and just has this ridiculous employee bloat for no reason other than oh look at all the employees. It means that they're a big successful company. You know, it's a basic map API and a couple, you know, developers to keep the app running. You don't need three, four thousand employees to, to, to run that app successfully. Um, and I think we're starting to see that. We're starting to see companies that realize, OK, you know what? I don't need an entire middle management team that all they do is manage each other and have meetings all day. Uh, I can get a couple of good guys you know, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Um, and if I manage it myself, we're going to get the same results, usually quicker. I, I remember uh, recently I had a meeting with, uh, not recently, last year, I had a meeting with uh, senior executives at a tier one manufacturing business that were, were still in, in, you know, talks with you here locally. And, you know, I walked into the office and, 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 he, and he literally, you know, suit and ties, you know, boardroom table full of people. 
uh, you know, swipe access to get in, all these crazy things and receptionist for receptionist. And they're like, you just, you look like you just, you know, just hopped out of, I think he said, he almost said it perfectly. He was like, you just hopped out of a trailer. And I'm like, in fact, I just did come from my warehouse unloading a trailer. And it, I, I, it's not that I had to, it's that I like to. And I think that that's the DNA of 2021 companies and the future successes that are disrupting, as opposed to, you know, maybe some of the more legacy businesses that, as we see, are, are just catastrophically failing uh, today. Um, so I, we've run a recession-proof, COVID-proof business for years, and I've learned it. Um, you know, so yeah, if, if an investor wants to invest in a company based on how many employees they have, perhaps we're not the one to invest in. If you want to invest in the future of the way of doing business uh, with our employees being all across the world, um, then that's, that's works for it. And I pride myself on it. And, and the numbers are going to show, and my history proves out that, that we, we tend to, you know, do more the right thing than the wrong thing. You know, having that discussion um, and kind of pointing out the fact that one, you know, you've kind of always just done it this way, you know, done it yourself, started your own businesses. Is there any type of misconception about the company that you want to clear up, you know, while we're on the podcast? Um, well, I mean, uh, one thing that, that really, really upset me was um, a series of tweets. And I stay away from social media. I don't have much of my own social media uh, because I, I feel that it's a distraction. And, you know, and what is probably I remember seeing that the younger ed generation, now I'm in my mid thirties, but the younger generation is the most depressive generation in since the depression. And I think it's just because so many people see happiness on social media that innately doesn't exist in real life and never did before, you know, uh, you know, we saw the, the, the beautiful people on social media on Instagram that, that John, you know, they don't, they don't exist and they exist, but it's not real life. Real life is, you know, women that are hardworking with the hair in the bun, uh, you know, and, and, and men that are, you know, scrapes and greases and bruises from, 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 from you know, doing what they do. Um, so the, the, the point is I, I do catch wind of uh, misconceptions. And I think one of the misconceptions, I, I think an investor, uh, you know, was, was or not an investor, but a, uh, an investor guy on Twitter was saying like, oh, works for it's a fake company. They work out of a back alley and we sent uh, someone to their address and it's a pizza shop and, and it's like, I, I, I don't like those misconceptions. I, I love when someone's like, hey, let me come visit you. And it's like, yeah. So we have, as, as any real business, we have multiple locations. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, always at our declared office online. Uh, and, and that's, you know, for a very clear reason that, you know, there's someone there that does have to deal with, hey, I'm an investor and I want to talk to uh, Stephen or, or any of the staff here. Uh, about investor questions and it's like well if i had to do that all day long then business just wouldn't get done uh, and we wouldn't have all the patents and, and customers that we do have uh that, that we're working towards in this year as well um so um i just i just feel that um you know the otc markets more than more than a lot or maybe equally uh is, is, a, is it, we're all putting on it you know the, there's a lot of companies that put on a show uh, and, and, you know, so there, there's a, there's a innate, you know, proceed with extreme caution. And I get that, but I've always been like, a, like my cell phone number that I'm talking to you on right now is on the bottom of every press release and people can text me or they can call me or they can email me. And if they have a question, they can ask it. But I guess the misconception that I want to address is forming that misconception without at least allowing or giving us the right that just general human right of just ask us first. Like if you think that this is something that, you know, we're, we're, we're misadvertising or misrepresenting, ask us first and let us give, afford us the opportunity to explain, you know, before, you know, you tweet uh, works for it as to, you know, this or that or whatever, because I can guarantee you that you will, you, you, I will prove you wrong if it's a bad thing, because we've, we've put a lot of work into what we're building and there's nothing more real than what we have. But outside of that, I, I have uh, no other misconceptions. I think we have a really, really good. Uh, you know, backwards looking track record and forward looking track record and a very, very bright forward path. I don't think it's something that's just, you know, an issue with, with, with WorkSport by any means. It, it seems to be a common thing with the OTC where, you know, instead of doing your due diligence, you know, do a two second Google search. And uh, if you don't like what you see, you know, you go and say something mean about it on the internet. Um, keyboard cowboys we call them yeah 
Uh, we call them uh, keyboard warriors, but it's <laughs> a yeah. similar concept. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's it's unfortunate because, you know, we're, you know, we're just starting to to really kind of expand on your existing online presence. So there's a lot of people that you know maybe haven't heard of you yet, and you know when they're doing their due diligence, the first thing they're seeing is you know, Joe Schmo on Twitter, you know, saying, "Oh, the company's not real." You're already kind of putting a negative thought in somebody's head that, "Oh, well, the company's not real." They're going to look at something with with more skepticism than you know if they went went on and said, "Look, the company's got multiple locations." You know, I had a great conversation with uh, with Steven. You know, I, I love the company. You know, perception matters. Um, and I think you're right. I think instead of not so much judging a book by its cover, but letting somebody else judge that book by its cover for you, you miss out on a lot of really good opportunities. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, a, a every human has a general premise of human rights. Uh, and I'm a huge human rights activist in general. I give a lot of like little amateur lectures on like, you know, exercising your human rights in today's day and age where we all forget about them. And I, I think one of the basic you know quality of life is just the the uh, the affordability of being asked a question and also you know remembering that you don't have to be subjected to answering that question is, is another topic but it's like hey are you guys a scam where can i come and see you right now i have a mask on my face and i'd love to come and it's like well here's where i am now um you know and and, and we're happy to show everything but yeah like spreading hate or misinformation is just i think like just just so archaic and thought and there's yeah the keyboard cowboy and warriors out there that you know just you know uh just just make it really really challenging so yeah our, our that's the you know the only misconception is to just not form a misconception you know and uh and, and allow us to you know afford us the opportunity of being able to explain our position um and just understand that we're not doing business by standards of what was good uh you know even pre-covid or, or or a decade ago but we're, we're rewriting the, the, the book of business and, and how it should be done and uh, and things might be a little uncomfortable but it'll all pan out and, and and just look at you know any innovator in today's day and age it just it was always something crazy and done against the grain but it, it tend to work out and uh, and that's that's we're a school of that sorry we're a student of that kind of school well uh, I think that's actually the perfect way to, to wrap it up um, Steven do you have anything you want to say to the investors before we uh close it out um I, I i have lots um you know i'm sorry to all those investors who couldn't participate in the regulation a offering it, it ended up it was priced uh, at, at, at basically just a little bit in the money uh you know when when we uh, offered it and you know to those investors who are, were able to participate in it they've already done extremely well and that's the the shareholder value we we will uh, we will bring to every shareholder and every, you know, every path moving forward. So, you know, we're, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep bringing huge shareholder value to everyone along, uh, you know, our growth curve in, in both our valuation and our company's revenue and balance sheet and whatnot. Um, and, you know, just stay tuned. We have a lot of things going on. Um, some of, you know, just saying that makes me roll my eyes. People say, oh, you must be so excited. But when they see me, I have bags under bags under bags under my eyes because this isn't a fun ride, you know, we're, we're, it's a fun ride, but it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's, it's an almost unhuman amount of work that I've been doing with my team for, for my whole adult life. And, um, you know, just closing thoughts are just, we've done so much with so little. Now we have so much. So the best is yet to come. Very well said. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I, I guess the, I'm just trying to think of the best way to word this. I, I I have a lot of respect for somebody who kind of jumps right into it with both feet. And I hate the, the, the bootstrap mythology, but, you know, kind of just builds this whole thing themselves. And, you know, it, it looks like, one, you've kind of been rewarded for it in, in terms of not just investor confidence, but, you know, the overfunding, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so I am excited to see what comes next because, you know, a lot of times in the OTC, you get these guys with good ideas and they get just enough funding to take it to maybe the next three to six months. And then they have to look at funding options again or, you know, they can't plan long term. I mean, it seems like you're, you've are you kind of got free reign now to say, hey, you know what? I have a goal. I want to reach it. And now we can, you know, go ahead and expedite that timeline. Yeah, yeah we did. We did. 
again, we did so much with so little, with nothing, like no funding. And, and you know, going way back, people always, people speculate, and I've heard of speculations. Uh, my parents are both working class. They still both work to this day. Uh, you know, no, you know, uh, you know, Donald Trump story of here's a million dollars to start your business with or whatever. Um, so I, I, I know all about it. I, I know what it's like not to be able to afford a coffee on your drive into work. I, I know, you know, what it's like to, you know, have an overdrawn bank account uh, or, you know, terrible credit. And, and it's a testament that there is no replacement for stick to itiveness. There is just none. Um, I, I feel that my, my my friend, my best friend bought me a shirt of the Kool-Aid man. And I, I wear it proudly every summer uh, or underneath, you know, the sweaters in the winter all the time. And, and he says, I bought it. You know, I bought it for you because you're the Kool-Aid guy. You just keep blowing through walls. And, you know, to anyone listening, whether you're an investor or not, and, you know, should, should my word be, be you know, of any value, um, you know, uh, to, 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 to listeners, you know, I'll conclude in saying that there is just no replacement for just, you know, grinding it out, sticking with it. And life is a ladder. Um, we've all heard this, John. And, and uh, the only difference is that uh, you're not taking a step up the ladder. You're ripping the person from the step above you down. And, and we just have to keep that in mind that when we, you think that you're a hard worker, well, you have to prove it by by overcoming the person in front of you who wants it and may want it more than you. Um, so that's our that's our one of our you know driving you know doctrines here uh, with Wolfport is that we just we, there's just no replacement for you know being a Rocky Balboa you know figuratively speaking. And, and it's, I remember another investor said you know that that famous statement is. Is winning a fight is not hard. No, not how hard you can hit, but how hard you can get hit and get up and keep fighting. And that's true. So you know th- why we're here um, is nothing short of just a lot of pain and a lot of hours. And we're gonna keep going. So uh, yeah, everyone, you know, strap in uh, and enjoy the ride because the best is yet to come. And, and I can almost assure every investor of one thing: as you know, unsexy or unappealing as this may sound, it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen. I've got no doubt in my mind that it's going to happen. So, you know, listen, I, I think now's a good time to wrap it. I said that, I think, mm-hmm. 10 minutes yeah. ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, no. It's cool. I, I, I love it. I mean, that's that's kind of the whole point is to just be able to, you know, have a conversation and let people kind of understand the company while we're, you know, just BSing. Um, cool. Listen, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Steve, thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, thank you. You know, I'm extremely excited to continue working with you guys. Um, and, you know, thank you to everybody that's been, you know, paying attention. Yeah, there's, a, you know, there's a lot that the company has to offer. And uh, I think you're going to be very excited about what, you know, what's coming down the pipe. So I appreciate it, John. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, my name is John and this is the way point. We're still trying to figure that out. (laughs) All right. Have a good one. (laughs) Thank you.